Um, Mr. Pagliano, his attendance is required here. There was interaction with Mr. Pagliano with another committee, but that's another committee. You have to bring that up with the other committee. I'm concerned about the integrity of this committee. I think we've done the right thing here. He's con his attendance is required here today. He's not here, and we will deal with that afterwards. We do have Mr. Combetta here. Mr. We do Chairman. have Mr. Mr. Thornton here, and we do have Mr. Cooper here. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from South Carolina. Um, could I engage with the chair in a colloquy? Yes. I, I thought witness Pagliano was granted immunity. That's what I've read. Well, Congress can't prosecute anyone, so the one entity who can has granted him immunity. I'm trying to figure out what his criminal liability is. If the gentleman would yield. Well, I was having a colloquy with the chair. I understand but that, you, but, but if I you have... can answer the question, I'll be happy to, yeah. happy to hear the from F you. The FBI granted him limited immunity for the purpose of The FBI of their... didn't grant him immunity. The Department of Justice granted that, him that's immunity. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. For that limited purpose. How do you know it was limited use immunity? We, I haven't seen the immunity agreement. Let me also inject here. No, I, 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 I have great respect for Mr. Lynch. I have asked what his, kind of a... His, his, his attorney, his attorney, Mr. Pagliano's attorney, says in his letter that Hold on, he was given limited immunity for that purpose. Well, that raises another interesting question that I hope the gentleman from Massachusetts will help me figure out, which is uh, when you've reached an agreement with the government, oftentimes it includes cooperation with other entities within that same government. So I wonder whether the Department of Justice and their proffer or immunity agreement with Mr. Pagliano made it clear that he needed to cooperate with another branch of government. We can't prosecute anyone. Only the Department of Justice can. And they've made it, frankly, crystal clear they're not prosecuting anyone in this fact pattern. So where's the criminal liability? The gentleman has constitutional rights under the Fifth Amendment. Whether they are violated by the FBI or violated here in Congress, well, but, still but, violated. But, but as the gentleman from Massachusetts knows, the Fifth the witness, Amendment... He, he, he cannot the Fifth be required Amendment, to be a witness against himself. Uh, right, but the Fifth yeah. Amendment doesn't protect you from non-incriminating answers. Well, we've got a criminal pro referral here. Not on that's, him. That's, he can uh, say sure his is. name. Sure it is. He can say where he works. Sure Every it answer it, it doesn't was issued incriminate after. you. The gentleman, the gentleman from, from Massachusetts will suspend. The gentleman from South Carolina says time. I, I was... Just inquiring of the chair, I, I thought there was an immunity agreement in place between the Department of Justice and this witness. So if he's been immunized and you can't prosecute anyone for anything, where is the criminal liability to him coming and answering questions? Which, which further assumes that every question you ask is going to expose him to criminal liability. There is no Fifth Amendment privilege against answering non-incriminating questions. Will a gentleman yield? Sure. But he can incriminate himself because we've issued, a, a, you know, a, a criminal referral here. He's got immunity. Because of the, he doesn't have immunity. He doesn't have immunity. He doesn't have immunity. You I'll, haven't seen the immunity I'll enter this agreement. Re, yeah, look at it. If you want to read it yourself, it's from the gentleman's attorney. He says, he's got limited well, no, immunity. No, I'm going to need so, a more reliable source than a criminal defense attorney. I want to read the agreement itself. I want to read the agreement between the Department of Justice and this witness. And whether or not that agreement requires this witness to cooperate with other entities of government. That is commonplace. For them to say, you can tell us the truth, but you can't tell Congress, makes no sense. That's all I want. Okay, the gen gentleman will suspend. The committee should also be aware that the committee uh, did send a subpoena to Mr. Pagliano to produce this immunity agreement. That was due today at 10 a.m., and he did not produce that as well. So he was under subpoena to not only have his presence here, but so that everybody on this panel can see this immunity agreement, which he supposedly has in his possession. Those documents were also subpoenaed by the committee, and he did not comply with that as well. It's the intention of the chair here. We're going to move on. There's a lot to d address with Mr. Pagliano. Like I said, we're not letting go of this, but we need to continue with this hearing. We have Mr. Uh, Combetta, Mr. Thornton, Mr. Cooper here. We uh, do appreciate being here. All witnesses are to be sworn before they testify. So if you will please rise and raise your right hand.
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. You may be seated. Let the record reflect that all witnesses answered in the affirmative. Um, we have not received any written testimony uh, from today's witnesses. Um, Mr. Combetta, do you intend to make a, an opening statement? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Mr. Thornton, do you intend to make an opening statement? On the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment constitutional privilege. Mr. Cooper, do you intend to make an opening statement? I have no opening statement. Okay. Please, if you all can move the microphone a little tighter, a little closer, it's just hard to hear. Um, Mr. Combetta, you, we've sent a, a subpoena to you for your supposed, we had read that there was a, a, an, a, an immunity agreement. Mr. Combetta, did you uh, produce your immunity agreement this morning as required under the subpoena? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Uh, Mr. Combetta, a couple of questions. Um, Senator Johnson last year released a portion of an August 19, uh, 2015 internal communication between two Platte River Networks employees. Here's how it read, quote, wondering how we can sneak an email in now after the fact asking them, meaning them we read to be the Clinton Executive Services Corporation, when they told us to cut the backups and have them confirm it for our records, starting to think this whole thing is really covering up some shady, and there's an expletive there, I just think if we have it in writing that they told us to cut the backups, then we can go public with our statement saying we've had the backups since day one, then we were told the to trim to 30 days it would make us look a whole lot better. As I understand it, you were one of the two employees assigned to PRN in the Clinton account. Did you send or receive this email? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Mr. Combetta, two days after that last email you wrote on August 21, 2015 to an employee of a third-party backup firm called Datto, this is what it said, quote, we are trying to tighten down every possible security angle on this customer. It occurs to us that anyone at PRN with access to the data partner portal, i.e. everyone here, could potentially access this device re via remote web feature. Can we set up either two-factor authentication or move this device to a separate partner account or some other method? to allow only who we permit on our end to access this, this device via the internet, end quote. I, if I understand the email correctly, every single employee at PRN could have accessed some of the most highly classified national security information that has ever been breached at the State Department. Can you prove that no other individuals accessed this data or even passed it on to someone else? On advice of counsel, I respectfully refuse to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Well, one last one here, Mr. Combetta. You're an IT guy who was paid by the Clintons. Generally, IT guys don't release their client, don't erase their clients' emails unless they're told to do so. So, who told you to delete the emails? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. Mr. Cummings, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Do you all plan to continue to uh, assert your, Ms. Cabetta, Ms. Thornton, do you, con you, do you plan to continue to assert your Fifth Amendment rights? Is, is that your plan? Mr. Is that your plan? On advice of counsel, I respectfully refuse to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment privilege. And you, Ms. Thornton? On advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment. I'm not going to have any other questions since, since it's clear that you're, you're going to get taking, um, taking the fifth on it. But, and I can understand why you're doing what you're doing. We've had, I can't 
case here before, we were answering a question or two. Uh, we then ended up in all kinds of litigation as to whether or not you had waived your Fifth Amendment privileges. And so I have nothing further. Uh, and I do, I do know that uh, D.C. Ethics, since D.C. Ethics opinion that addresses the abuse of witnesses trying to take their Fifth Amendment privileges. And as a lawyer, uh, I'm not going to be a part of that process. Uh, Mr. Combetta, uh, given the, that you have indicated that you do not intend to answer any questions out of respect for your constitutional rights, we will now excuse you uh, from the table. Okay. Mr. Thornton. Yesterday, Chairman Lamar Smith of the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee released an August 13th, uh, 2015 letter from Datto to PRN's attorney, which said this, and I quote, We have been following the news reports concerning various investigations related to Secretary Clinton's emails, including Platte River's provision of IT-related services to her. We have some concerns relative to data security. Platt has not enabled encryption at the local device. Given the sensitive, high-profile nature of the data which is alleged in press reports to potentially reside on the Datto device, it may be the target of a cyber attack from a multitude of highly sophisticated and capable entities or individuals. We believe such an event could place the, encrypted, the unencrypted data itself at risk, as well as expose both Datto and Platte River systems to collateral damage. In its current state, and it goes on, the device and the data that is stored thereon and it goes on, is more, vulnerable to, is more vulnerable to cyber attack than Datto believes is prudent under the circumstances. Mr. Thornton, given the vulnerabilities identified by Datto, are you aware of any hacks of PRN's systems? On the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment constitutional privilege. I'd like to just ask you one other question that I can't imagine has any implications on any uh, criminal culpability or anything else to the just a simple question yes or no and we'll if you'll answer this one we'll cut you loose here were you interviewed by the FBI on the advice of counsel I respectfully decline to answer and assert my Fifth Amendment constitutional privilege you can't answer the question about whether or not you were interviewed by the FBI? On the advice of counsel, I respectfully decline. Mr. Cummings. Uh, again, as a, a member of the bar for 40 years, uh, I'm not going to participate in this. Uh, you know, this, I, I, I just think that when we bring witnesses here and we parade them, uh, when we could do it in executive session or whatever, uh, again, um, I think it would be unethical for me to do that. So I have nothing. Given that the witness has indicated he does not intend to answer any questions out of respect for his constitutional rights, we will now excuse Mr. Thornton from the table. We will recess for two minutes while the clerk is able to reset the table. The committee stands in recess. Samuel Izerzer from the Samuel Izerzer channel. Welcome. Welcome to my all new, um, well, it's not an all new uh, channel, but been around for a few years. Uh, but I, I want to welcome all of my new subscribers. And um, I know you, I've been getting a lot, a lot of uh, emails, good and mostly good, actually. Got some bad ones too, but probably those are the uh, Clinton trolls and <laughs> the nutcases. But um, well, today we're going to be. Speaking about some of the WikiLeaks um, emails, some of the, it's pretty damning actually, from one of Clinton's aides and lawyer too at the same time. 
And basically, these leaked emails reveal possible evidence that the State Department really never had intended to charge Clinton, really. Uh, uh, my point of view, and believe you me, this, this doesn't sound very good, too. And um, if you take a look at uh, one of the emails over there, here, um, take a look at it. This is the FOIA, WJC speeches. If you don't know, if you're that dumb, it's William J. Clinton or Bill Clinton speeches for all uh, the illiterates out there who don't know. Um, the ones who watch CNN, you know, you know the, those, type, those type of people. You know, they're just like, uh, they're, they're like looking, uh, you know. Anyways, so basically uh, this is uh, from uh, Tina uh, Flournoy, obviously one of the uh, um, Clinton's uh, aides. Uh, to Cheryl Mills, to John Podesta, and it's coming actually from Cheryl Mills. Okay. And Heather Samuelson. Okay, well, here we go. March 17, 2015. And basically, if people don't know who she is, uh, Sh uh, Cheryl Mills, uh, uh, hey, uh, Heather Samuelson. Is a longtime campaign staffer, uh, worked as a White House liaison at the Clinton State Department. She worked for the State Department at that time for Hillary Clinton, and then later became her lawyer. Hmm, <laughs> State Department lawyer. Okay, uh, maybe there's a connection there. As a lawyer, Samuelson uh, led up the 2014 review of Clinton's emails to determine which ones were work-related and which ones were personal, and she had that all on her laptop. And we all know what happened, obviously, that uh, Comey and the, uh, and the criminal syndicate. I mean, you know, it's giving really the FBI, which is a great organization, a terrible, terrible name. Um, there's so many people who want his resignation. But anyways, I don't want to get into the details. And uh, according to, uh, well, what happened, I mean, we all saw uh, the Department of Justice uh, gave immunity. And guess what? Her laptop was destroyed. Isn't that great? But anyways, um, the reason why this is all what's what's going on here is that obviously there's there's been you know some liaison happening with the State Department and and the what Clinton Foundation and Hillary. You know, weekly released documents from the Clinton campaign uh, sp uh, from the John Podesta email files they call them now continues to deliver damning evidence. Okay, calling into question the former Secretary of State integrity, as well as her suitability for the White House. She thinks she's suitable to the White House after this? Just so much email. How stupid. How stupid. How stupid, stupid, stupid can you be, really? For all you closet Democrats out there, I mean, I'm sure you're voting for Trump, but... The people out there who are voting, how stupid. How stupid. Really, I can't go on. How stupid can you be? And this is uh, dated March 17, 2015 from Samuelson. Okay? And uh, also, it, it came from the Freedom Information uh, Request by Judicial Wash uh, from the Bill Clinton... Um, Foundation, uh, a newly re revealed email shows near certain evidence that uh, Samuelson was in close contact with inside the Department of State or the State Department during the investigation of the private email server. That's a no-no. So she was giving information as a lawyer to the State Department. Hmm. That's not good. This is not good at all. So she was giving a lot of information. This is damning. Totally, totally, totally. You don't do that. You don't have a connection. Look, I mean, she's sending all these emails. Uh, one of them is, a, it's, is about a Turkish government, um, which Bill Clinton declined. I read that. Here, he declined. Okay. She's sending information with that. She's sending information to the State Department. Obviously, they're reading. Um, it's, it's incredible. 
And, and there was no objections by the Department of State or the State Department in this batch, but some lengthy in internal discussion among the officials were highlighted. Um, but anyways, some of the emails, traffic here, uh, foundation, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I like this one, the Canadian National Exhibit uh, Exhibition. Sending money um, in a way of like, okay, you know what? It's an email, tra uh, email traffic indicates that built uh, compensation for the speaking engagement would come from the Canadian government via their program to promote tourism in the street of Canada. Sorry, I'm just going to close the door because there was just uh, a lot of um, noise coming from the background there. And there's heavily re, uh, redacted emails, obviously, uh, from the uh, from uh, from the State Department officials, including the Embassy of Canada in the Embassy of Canada. Okay, now let's get on here. I mean, the Cisco systems too, by the way, also big, two hundred fifty-five thousand for speeches. Um, there were other ones, but here, the Cisco system. Wow. Credit submitted by the Bill Clinton to speak at Cisco two months before uh, Hillary Clinton award Cisco Cinema, the State Department award for corporate excellence. Uh, wow, two hundred fifty-five thousand. What it gives you? Huh? <laughs> you have more money. Anyways, um, you can go on the website over here. I'll have the email link. Okay, and basically um, the whole, the whole, the whole question over here is that you have. You had somebody from the inside working with Hillary, okay, destroying evidence, uh, destroying classified information and unclassified information, and at the same time, handing information, sending emails to the State Department during the investigation of the private server or email server. It's a no-no. You don't do that. That's a breach. That's, that's against the law. So... I don't know. I don't know what more. I don't know how stupid can you be? How stupid? How stupid? How stupid can you be? I mean, I, I, I look at someone and says, yeah, I'm voting for, for, for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah, she, she's very honest. Uh, wow, she's, um, hmm, my God, she's so honest. Really? Really? Anybody seen the last two presidential debate? All that cheating going on before? Anyways. My name is Samuel Lezerzer. You can make up your own wine. These are the WikiLeaks emails. And uh, good luck. We hope, we hope uh, there's no rigging going on because there's one thing that we have left really in the Constitution is the right to vote. And I just hope this just don't rig the elections. I mean, I have, uh, I have other um, videos concerning some of the polls, the real polls, scientific polls actually, scientific polls which have Donald Trump leading by three to four percentage points over Hillary Clinton. That's when I tell you, all the CNN polls, and I don't even look at them, they're all lying, they're all, pff, they're making it up, they probably have a hundred people, these are the same people, probably 80% stacked Democrats, but there's a scientific poll out there, I'll have that link also underneath there, you're going to love it. My name is Samuel Ezerzer. Long live liberty, freedom, our constitution, and let's fight for our democracy. Thank you. From uh, Deputy Attorney General James Cole, it's dated May 12th, 2014. Um, this memorandum was issued to you and others on the policy concerning electronic recording of statements. Are you familiar with this yes. memorandum? Mm -hmm. um, the policy established a, establishes a presumption that the FBI will electronically record statements made by individuals in their custody. Now, I know that Secretary Clinton was not technically in custody, but the policy also encourages agents and prosecutors to consider electronic recording in investigative or other circumstances. Uh, where that presumption does not exist. The policy also encourages agents and prosecutors to consult with each other in such circumstances. And given the magnitude of what we've been talking about today and the, and the huge public interest and demand for uh, information with regard to the public trust, uh, I, I think this is specifically 
uh, important to this discussion. Now, you're aware of this policy, correct? Right, that applies to people that are in handcuffs. Uh, but not, it also applies to, uh, uh, it, the policy also encourages agents and prosecutors to consider electronic recording in, in investigative matter and other matters where that presumption does not exist. Does sure. it not? The FBI doesn't do it, but sure, I understand that the, they encouraged us to talk about it. So did, did the agents then did not consider the, uh, to conduct the interview uh, in, in a recorded situation then? We do not record non-custodial interviews. Okay. Now, maybe someday folks will urge us to change that policy, but we don't, and we sure wouldn't want to change it in one particular case. Well, that's the policy. I'm just reading the policy that's uh, issued by uh, the uh, Deputy Attorney General, James Cole, that uh, is to you and to others in the Department of Justice that establishes the policy. So. I, uh, if you don't do it, I, I assume that you're doing it against the policy of the Department of Justice. No, that, that policy only governs custodial interrogation, so people who've been locked up. We do not, and it is not inconsistent with Department of Justice policy, record non-custodial, so that is voluntary interviews where someone's not in our custody. Well, I'm, I'm reading this differently then because it does say that there's an exception that... Uh, that